New World Order. Billions of people on planet Earth are living in ignorance. Before your very eyes, politicians are advancing a global plan. Since the time of Napoleon, secret societies have been influencing politicians to take over and conquer Europe. Now, in the 21st century, their work of ages is coming to fruition. The New World Order is about the centralization of power. How far has the ancient Illuminati secret society network penetrated world politics? Five million walk among us, Freemasons. Their lavish temples are in every major city. Their members include the power elite. For centuries, they've inspired conspiracy theories about secret governments and global control. In most countries, the people who are in power, mostly they are Freemasons. Who are they? What do they do? And why? There's nothing wrong with secrets. True, they can still be found at the highest levels of American government. From the Capitol to the White House, Freemasons throughout history have freely roamed the halls of power in Washington. Senator Chuck Grassley's a Mason, so is Senator John Tester. But getting someone to chat about it can sometimes be tricky. I'm doing health care. <laughs> Senator Mike Enzi didn't break stride while explaining why he's part of the secretive society. It's a brotherhood built on constructing good men. Yet behind these closed doors... I became a mason in my local lodge in Beckley, West Virginia. Secrets reveal... This was this 32nd degree. Congressman See, Nick Rahal, a mason for almost four decades, decoded masonry's most prolific symbol. You may see the compass in the square, it's symbols of... ...ionic training. Uh, we live by the square, we're upright individuals. The congressman describes masonry as a fraternity. He says his mentor and fellow Mason, West Virginia Senator Robert Byrd, nominated him for membership. As a 33rd degree Mason, the highest level in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, Congressman Ray Hall acknowledges there are a lot of secrets and codes, but he says they're not sinister. So are you trying to rule the world? <laughs> well, let's say no. <laughs> but if we were, would I tell you? No. Good afternoon. I am honored to have this opportunity to thank the members of the Grand Lodge of the Free and Accepted Masons of the District of Columbia for the honor of being this year's Grand Lodge Medal of Freedom Award recipient. Many of today's leaders are part of the Mason tradition. Masons serve in our government and in business community. Masons are our doctors, educators, and members of our military. The United States is stronger because of their leadership. It is stronger because of the values Masons promote. Yes, Mr. Prater, Islam has contributed a lot to America. In the middle of the Supreme Court is, in the rotunda, is a statue or bust of the Prophet Muhammad, showing the respect that American law and jurisprudence has for the revealer of the Quran. Many of American presidents are Masons and Shriners who got to the 33rd degree and studied the Quran in secret and have the star and the crescent on their fez. So Islam is at the basis of Western and American civilization. Well, don't want to ask you. you and George Bush are, were both members of Skull and Bones, the secret society at Yale. <laughs> the rule is if someone mentions Skull and Bones, you walk out of the room. If you're both in a presidential you're, you're, you're both in a presidential debate and the moderator says Skull and Bones, do you both leave the podiums? I doubt You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the website. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> a fascinating book. American journalist Alexandra Robbins claims to have unearthed a skull and bones plan to dominate the world. One can't help recognizing the fact that in the 170 years since the formation of the Skull and Bones Society, it has members in the most influential jobs all over the world. New initiates seem to fall effortlessly into high-paid jobs within banks, media organizations, government agencies and huge corporations which earn vast profits 
from government defense contracts. Barack Obama, like all the other black leaders in America, is a Freemason. This is a poster that was published, and it was advertised on the internet, welcoming fellow Masons to come to the Masonic inaugural ball in honor of the 44th President of the United States, Barack Obama, conducted by the Lodge there in Washington, D.C. Barack Obama and his Masonic inaugural ball. On their website, the Prince Hall Masons, that is the... And here on their own website, they campaign for Barack Obama. Production. Efter kommunismens sammanbrott blev många kommunistiska brottslingar frimurare i hela Östeuropa. Här ser vi deras invigningsritualer i Ukraina. President Leonid Kravchuk blir frimurare, liksom försvarsministern, riksåklagaren, en känd popsångare. Hello again and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Al Gurunov and today we'll talk about the presidential election campaign in Russia. Our guest in the studio today is the leader of the Democratic Party of Russia, Andrei Bogdanov. Andrei Bogdanov, a Russian politician, Mason, Grand Master of Grand Lodge of Russia, and Chairman of the Democratic Party of Russia, is one of them. He began his political career in 1990 when he joined the Democratic Party of Russia. You know, all foreign Masonic lodges have master masons, and they're all public people actually. The website of any Western lodge usually shows a photo of the master mason and his name. De ser ju Silvio Berlusconi och andra västerländska politiker få skydd för sin brottslighet hos hemliga sällskap. Berlusconis medlemsnummer i P2 var 1816. La questione delle nomine, molto importante. Oggi c'è un sulle agenzie c'è un corollario di voci, di riunioni, non si sa nemmeno se dovrà esserci una riunione straordinaria a Bruxelles. Ma io mi domando una cosa, esaminando i nomi che circolano. Per esempio, mi limito a tre, Balkenende, Milliband e Varoupoui. Ma è mai possibile che nessuno osservi, abbia osservato che tutte e tre Sono frequentatori delle riunioni, vuoi del Bilderberg, vuoi della Trilaterale. Beh, io credo che si debbano stabilire dei principi di trasparenza, tanto sovente indicati a parole da, dalle nostre istituzioni. E si debba chiedere con chiarezza a queste persone se sono i candidati del loro paese nelle forze politiche o di questi gruppi occulti che si riuniscono a porte chiuse e decidono sulla pelle e sulla testa dei popoli. When we had a president, we'd see a giant global political figure. The man that would be the political leader for 500 million people. The man that would represent all of us on the world stage. The man whose job was so important that, of course, you're paid more than President Obama. Well, I'm afraid what we got was you. The question that I want to ask, that we're all going to ask, is who are you? I'd never heard of you. Nobody in Europe had ever heard of you. I would like to ask you, President, who voted for you and what mechanism? Oh, I know democracy is not popular with you lot. And what uh, mechanism do the peoples of Europe have Mr. to remove President. you? Is this European democracy? Well, I, I sense, uh, I sense well, though, that you're competent and capable and dangerous. And I have no doubt that it's your intention to be the quiet assassin of European democracy and of the European nation-states. You appear to... The Masonic establishment at the heart of British society does not like being probed or investigated when it comes to matters of Masonic membership. A recent select committee inquiry chaired by Labour MP Chris Mullins found that the Metropolitan Police Force and Judiciary were unwilling to force their members to disclose if they were members of secret societies. In a series of embarrassing revelations in the 1970s and 1980s, the British author Martin Short established that the Scotland Yard Vice Squad and senior CID officers were all Masons and taking bribes from pornographers in London, so Scotland. Masons used to proudly parade through the streets. 
after the exposure of local authority frauds involving corrupt Masonic solicitors and counsellors, British Freemasons went underground. The British government employs a huge number of civil servants, magistrates, judges, solicitors and officials, which have all historically been Freemasons. The deceased author of The Brotherhood, Stephen Knight, says that penetration of Freemasonry into the British establishment goes way beyond policemen and parish councils. Knight says that the Palace of Westminster, home to the British Parliament, is used as a meeting place for at least two Masonic lodges. Members of Parliament from all political parties gather together wearing white gloves, sashes, lambskin aprons and wielding ceremonial daggers swearing bloodthirsty oaths of allegiance to each other. Just where this leaves British democracy is anyone's guess. Historian Peter Lineham says Freemasonry has had a significant influence in New Zealand's history, both in business and politics. Past Prime Ministers have been Freemasons. I think the, the three of them that need to be picked out are in fact Massey, Holland in the 1950s and Holyoke in the 1960s. Are the Prime Ministers and Governors General involved in Freemasonry seen here in their regalia? Freemasons have always been a part of Perth, but most of us have no idea what they're about. Gary Adshead decided to find out. Behind this door lies many secrets, a place full of symbolism and ritual, a place the rest of society has long viewed with suspicion. Are you still a secret society? Uh, we're a society with secrets. It's true that Freemasons had a heck of a role to play in the establishment of the USA. There's no, there's no denying that. And Western Australia. State premiers, senior police, many have gone through the Freemasons' initiation. Blindfolded, their left breast is exposed and a dagger or sword held to their chest. The thing is about this Big Brother state, see, is that it's happening in country after country after country after country. I had uh, a German film crew come see me a few days ago when I was at home. They were going on about the Big Brother state being introduced in Germany. It's happening on an outrageous scale in America, in Canada, in, in Australia, in Europe. If we follow the course of history since the Industrial Revolution, we will see a fascinating sequence of events unfolding seem to prove the conspiracy theory, or at least provide major arguments for it. First, the ever-increasing concentration of cash and other resources in a few private hands, such as banks and gigantic multinational corporations. Corporations whose revenues are equivalent to the GDPs of entire countries, and whose mere survival demands more and more profits year after year, no matter the social cost. Second, the creation of public multilateral control organizations that are actually nothing but the public arm of powerful private interests. These organizations include the American Federal Reserve, the World Bank, and the IMF. Third, the undeniable advance of the process known as privatization. That is, taking non-renewable natural resources, communication infrastructures, heavy industries, as well as defense, health, and banking systems, out of the hands of the people and delivering them into the clutches of profit-hungry private corporations. Fourth, the phenomenon of cultural and financial globalization that in truth amounts to little more than the imposition of a dominant cultural and economic system upon those of peripheral countries. Fifth, the creation of worldwide conflicts and stereotypical enemies to manipulate public opinion and destroy any possibility of discussion or dissent, leading to the actual loss of many of the most elementary democratic rights. The US Patriot Act of 2001 is a good example of this. When panic attacks, people tend to accept more and more control. Finally, and most interesting of all, that almost all of the key players of these events, those who are really taking the decisions and hold the true political and economic reins of the West by being in command of its capital, armed forces, or even votes, 
are coincidentally grouped in just a few societies that meet behind closed doors.